It's Beer O'Clock Show Revisited. Hello, my name is Mark, and joining me is my best beer buddy from the past and from the future. It's Steve. Hello, Steve. Hi, Mark. How you doing? I'm fine, mate. You? Yeah, not too bad. This is a spin-off series from the regular Beer O'Clock Show, where we are going to be revisiting a selection of beers that we did in the first series of the show. It's somewhat self-reflective, somewhat self-redeeming, somewhat (laughs) navel-gazing, but really... somewhat that we just want to give some of these beers another chance. Exactly. So these are all beers over the course of this little spin-off. It's only going to be a a few, four or five maybe, that are beers that we feel that we didn't do justice either... Over time, we've been proven wrong with our original feelings and we may have changed our minds or we we love the beers, but we don't think our palates really gave it justice because we have been doing the show for almost three years now. And personally, anyone who's been listening to the show from the beginning knows that my palate has grown exponentially, as has Steve's. Steve's tastes and beers have broadened and all that kind of stuff as well, so... This is the first episode, obviously, and this time round we are revisiting Thornbridge's Wild Raven, which we reviewed way back in November 2012. Um, it was called something different back then. It was called Raven, but regardless, it's still a black IPA, 6.6% ABV. Um, Steve. Mark. What do you remember about this beer the first time you had it, mate? Um, I remember us talking about how it had uh, very piney aromas to it, mm-hmm. um, and and very kind of woody, foresty aromas to it. I remember the flavours being quite refreshing, um, with quite a, a bit of a kind of roasted aftertaste. Um, I think it's probably fair to say that at the time when when we first drank this, it was probably my first exposure to a black IPA. Um, probably uh, at the time of of originally drinking it at at 6.6%, I I imagine I was probably raving about how high the ABV was as (laughs) as well. Um, but, but now 6.6%, this is sessionable. Yeah. This is, isn't it? Um, I mean, it's, it's strange going back and doing these again, but yeah, it's, it's what you said in the introduction there. There's just, uh, that the beers that we're going to feature in this, this series are, as, as Mark said, they're, they're twofold. They're ones that we felt as though we didn't do justice to, um, or ones that we simply wanted to go back and do again with our new palettes to, to see what we could pull out of them. And and this is one of those I'm actually really excited about doing again because I, I, I think where we both are now in terms of what we taste and what we experience in beers, this could be a real challenge for us tonight to really pull out some, some good tasting notes from this beer. Yeah, well... It- They can't be any worse than the tasting notes we did with our first review, because I was listening back to it this afternoon, and we were basically talking about how, yes, it was piney, but then it was hoppy and a little bit malty. (laughs) Brilliant. (laughs) And that was basically it. And trying to all the bases there, then. Trying to come up with the different ways of describing hoppy and malty without actually referring to any flavours whatsoever. But hey, that's when (laughs) that's what you get when you've done a beer show for only a couple of months. So, uh. I have to say as well that these these beers are probably, as we're drinking them now, are still fairly fresh as well because these came straight off a bottling line and were put into our hands by um, an employee from Thornbridge who I do just want to thank for for these beers tonight. So Simon, at Mazzy Mixer on on Twitter, thanks for sorting out us out with these beers to to make sure we've we've got them in the freshest possible condition um, to do on Revisited. Indeed. Um, And... Going back to what I remember from our first recording, it does have a lovely, nice, thick, kind of off-white head. Lovely black colour all the way through, as you would expect. Now, when we first reviewed this, I think it had just won a World Beer Award. For yes, the best uh, black world's IPA? best black I- IPA, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, and you are getting those... Oh, that... Lovely fresh pine needle smell. It smells like the floor of a pine forest. Yeah, it's it's all got also got for me what I would now term um, 
as it's got that typical Thornbridge-ness to it yeah. on, on the aroma. You, you can you can pull out a, a Thornbridge beer from, from the aroma <laughs> and that's there as well. Um, yeah, I mean, pine needles, they're, 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 there's some citrus in there as well. And not a lot of the roasted flavours that, 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 that you would normally associate with a black IPA. So no. be interested to see whether they come through on the flavour. Indeed. So, uh, shall we get into it, buddy? Yeah, let's let's do this, mate. Cheers. Once Cheers again. So here's our first revisited beer, Wild Raven from Thornbridge. Oh. Okay, now that is is exactly what I look for in a black IPA. There's just a hint of roast mm-hmm. at the end. Um, <laughs> But the majority of it is is all the big citrus hoppy fr- flavors coming through there. Um, it it tickles your tongue. It's the carbonation's beautiful, and and then like I say, you just get this hint of bitterness at the end from from the roasted malts that that, that are coming through in in that, um, leaving a very clean finish as well. Yeah, the aroma and the way it circulates through your no- nasal cavities, you're getting. Those lovely piney aromas with a cloud of bittering. Then, like you say, on the mouth, it dissipates into kind of this really base, biscuity, slightly malty, slightly roasted bittering as well towards the end. And the, the, the bitterness is almost like it, it's, it's like the bit, bitterness that you get from a dark chocolate. It, it's that sort of bitterness. So mm-hmm. when, when, we, when we talk about roasted and, and that, you know, I, I, I suppose you instantly sort of think, oh, well, coffee. But no, it's not. It's it, it's more that dark chocolate bit, bitterness, which has got a little bit of a bittersweet finish to it. Um, just, just coming through and it's just it's a lovely, well-balanced beer. Yeah, because I think the first time we had this, I was concerned that it was going to be because way back then I wasn't a fan of dark beers because I was always getting that roasted malt, kind of like that, you know, what you would normally get from a stout. And I was concerned that we'd be getting that from this. But no, it's just like you're saying, the dark chocolate, like when you get the proper dark chocolate and you're getting the sweetness, but you're also getting that nice dark bittering kind of mixing in, in with it. And the hops really freshen everything up. So these are a lovely evergreen, piney. Mm, nice. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I think maybe the word that you're looking for there is citrus, mate. I mean, for, for me, and it's it's not like massive citrus. So we're not talking lemon and lime. I'm thinking probably something more along the lines of orange that, that that's coming through there that balances really well with sort of like the bittersweet chocolate flavors um those flavors just working really real really well together as as they're coming through the glass i can imagine as well as this beer warms those flavors becoming more pronounced as well because i've 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 literally done mine straight from the fridge as as i would do with any ipa that i would choose to drink because i like my ipas cold um but i imagine as it begins to warm you just get a little bit like like with any beer you get more out of the flavor coming coming through yeah, mine's been sitting out of the fridge. It's been in the fridge for quite a few days now. But it's been sitting out for about half an hour. So it has warmed up a little bit, but you're getting that orange zest. It's just nice. <laughs> I remember it, it, I remember us loving this beer way back when. But It's it's interesting actually, because I, I remember back to that first season and, and, and in subsequent subsequent shows since we've we've often cited the the, the sierra nevada parallel show as being the one where we both had our craft awakening yeah um however we did this beer a few weeks before we did the sierra nevada and and i'm kind of wondering whether we we had a, a pre-awakening that we didn't even really acknowledge at the time i think this one kind of broke our preconceptions of what a black beer is yeah because black ipa we were expecting it to be like a hoppy stout and I was worried about those roasted flavours coming through but I just remember us thinking wow this doesn't taste like a black beer Mm -hmm. and you know there's been arguments on Twitter and stuff about you know what should a black IPA taste like you know ever since we had this there's been we've seen various conversations 
and you know should you be able to tell it's a black IPA should, should it just taste like an IPA or whatever I, I don't know but th <laughs> this is a great tasting beer well, um, I mean, yeah, I agree that there because I've I've been involved in some of those d discussions on 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 Twitter with with a number of people. But for me, uh, a black IPA needs to be hops first, and then hints of bitterness in the background. Not, I, I don't just want a hoppy stout. If I want a hoppy stout, I'll buy a stout that's been brewed by a a craft brewery yeah. and I'll get my hoppy stout. What I want with a black IPA is almost a beer that I'm going to pick up. I'm going to, and I could do in a blind tasting and smell and taste. And I think it was an IPA um, right up until that last minute. And it'd be, be interesting, you know, anyone listening to this, if you want to share your thoughts on, on, on black IPAs, um, what do you think they should taste like? Is it, is it hops first, roasted second, or, or do you just want a hoppy stout? What, what, what should the style be like? Let's, let's have your thoughts. Indeedy. Um, and I can say that this is the beer that started our love affair with Thornbridge, or at least my love affair with Thornbridge. This kind of set the bar for... Thornbridge aren't known for being like a craft brewery. They're just a great brewery that brews great, some sometimes traditional style beers, other times, you know, more interesting styles of beers. But every beer I've ever had from Thornbridge is just class, really. Uh, oh, absolutely. I'm, you're not going to get me disagree with, with you there. And like, later on in this series, we are going to be doing um, Jaipur uh, again well um anybody out there that's groaning at that suggestion that oh they're doing jaipur well sorry jaipur is a classic english ipa um it's probably the point at which uh, a lot of people in this country sat up and went wow so that's what beer tastes like um and yeah we did that in the early days of season two but it's one that we want to go back and do again now um you know and i don't just want these revisited shows to seem like it's it's the thornbridge show but we had limited um, choices <laughs> back in those days. We, we we used to just sort of get beers off the supermarket shelves, and so um, yeah, look out for the uh, the Jaipur show coming in a few months' time. Yeah, indeed. Um, lovely dry finish off this that I don't remember from the last time. Is it is it that you don't remember it, or that you or that you couldn't detect a dry finish back then? I mate? probably would have thought, "Gee, I'm feeling thirsty after drinking this," but I'm getting this lovely. <laughs> Slightly parched <laughs> to try and finish off it. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's I like... mean, I, I, I thought, well, I'm going to jump in. I think it's stunning. I mean, it's to be fair, since we last did it, what was it you said two and a half, nearly three years ago when we reviewed this beer? I've probably mm. only had it once since then, um, which is a real crime. And, and it's, it's something that I plan to, uh, rectify moving forward because actually i've forgotten just how good this beer is um where i've become such a halcyon addict and instantly go for that as the thornbridge beer i've really forgotten how good the wild raven is um and it's gonna make me want to drink it a lot more coming back to it now yeah i mean as it airs and as it warms up those hops really sink their teeth in you know it's almost at the level of you're approaching that kind of the bitiness that you would get from healthy and I think for me at, at least it's not the the big hot flavors or anything like that but you're getting that lovely dryness you're getting that zesty citrus tang to it yeah yeah I've I mean I've just picked up an incredible bitter finish from the, the, the swig that I was just finishing as you were talking there um and it's it's just leaving me. I'm just I'm just sitting here and uh, I'm just reveling in 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 the, in the taste explosion that's going on in my mouth right now. Um, incredible beer, and I'm I'm glad we've gone back and 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 done it again. Um, and and just just to mention for those of you that are eagle-eyed or eagle-eared, um, if you do go back and listen to the original show, which we'll we'll make sure we put a link to in the show notes. So if you want to go back and and, and listen to how bad we were in the early days, feel free. <laughs> um, but when we drank it back then, it was it was actually just called Raven, 
Um, you'll notice now that it's called Wild Raven, and basically the story behind that is that, that there was already a beer being brewed by another brewery called Raven. They very politely um, and respectfully asked Thornbridge to change the name of the beer. Thornbridge, not wanting to lose the identity of the beer after it winning an award, um, suggested would they they be happy just with with the name Wild being added to it, and the other the other brewery agreed. That, folks, is how you do a dispute over a name. <laughs> okay, no more needs to be said about that. Exactly. Thornbridge Wild Raven, six point six percent black IPA, well and truly revisited. I think, mate. I did indeed, and you can tell why this was setting the world on fire three years ago. So it's such a classy beer. Absolutely. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we came back to this. Me too. Good shout, mate. You're right. <laughs> We've got a few other beers lined up for the Revisited series. Keep your eye out on the Beer O'Clock Show feed. They're going to be interspersed with other little spin-offs. We've got the Harvesting spin-off going as well, of course, and the regular Beer O'Clock Show coming into your ears every week. So keep your eye on the Beer O'Clock Show feed. It's all going to be in the same feed, as you know, if you've already downloaded this. And... Yeah, some classic beers are coming, beers that everyone knows and loves and that we perhaps didn't give the due attention or recognition of or just deserve a re-review in our minds from back when we were shit. <laughs> I, think, I think that's a little bit harsh, mate. Maybe, maybe back when we didn't know what we were doing, um, yeah. but here we are now. Um, yeah, and of course, if you want to get involved in, in the Revisited series, uh, drinking these beers along with us, sharing your thoughts, sharing what we're saying about beer, just just tweet us and, and, and just use the hashtag Revisited, um, and, and that way we'll be able to, to, to stay on top of the conversations that are going on. Cool. Right, until next time, Steve... When we travel back into the past. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye.